Welcome to the Influencer Show with your host, Trishon Ben Salmi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Influencer Show, where I interview people who can help help influence the way you live life in a number of different ways. I'm your host, D7, and today we have a very, very special guest with us today. So, if you'd like to introduce yourself to your listeners and let them know a little bit about you. How's it going? My name is Jihab. My actual name is Hubert. I do YouTube, social media influencer, I guess. Um, I, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know how else to introduce myself. I'm a cool guy. And so are you. We're two yeah. cool guys having a cool conversation. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. And why don't you share with the listeners why you do what you do? Uh, so I, uh, it's hard to explain this because it was like, if I think back to when I first started, it wasn't like a, uh, it wasn't like this grand story of how I just knew what I was going to do. And it was like this epic thing. It was literally like, so I had um, taken a year off school because here in Sweden, we usually go like nine years. We had like primary school and then you get to like choose a subject. Right. So I was like, okay, I don't know what to pick. I'm just going to take a year off because I don't know what to choose. I just felt so confused with life and everything. And then it, was literally just the thing like hey um i feel like trying something new out and i just why not just try a little youtube thing right um but why i still keep doing it today is just because like i've always been an entertainer at heart i always love making jokes i always love just being creative and expressing myself and i think i think that's pretty much i just really like making videos and doing the content creation process It feels, it's just really fun. That's plain and simple, really. That is absolutely amazing. It sounds really great. And for those of you who haven't checked out um, Hubert's channel, Mm -hmm. I really do advise that you do check it out. And as he said, it is Gehab, G-E-H-A-B. That's me. (laughs) It's actually really funny. The name comes from, I didn't actually come up with the name. My dad did. So his initials are G-H-B, right? And when he played like online games back in the day when he was like a, 20 years i think it was like my, no maybe not my age a bit older like 30 or something he just he took his initials he was like i'm just gonna spice it up add a, an a add an e and it became ghab and then it just sort of got passed down from me because he created this like playstation account for me when i was like 12 and then he named it ghab thinking we could change it because i wanted to be called galaxy soldier that was like my thing and then he just changed it or so he, he named it ghab and we couldn't change it so i had to stick with it and then eventually it just grew on me. And then now I've like, I'm like carrying forth his legacy. So it's, it's an interesting story behind the name. Oh, that is absolutely amazing. And thank you for sharing. I thought it'd be a fun little story because a lot of people ask me how I come up with the name. And it's like, I didn't actually come up with it. But it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's a family name now, essentially. Oh, that, is, that is really great. Could you share with us like, what is the like, biggest issue or maybe even like a problem that you're aiming to solve as an influencer in your industry? Okay, so I did, I did think a lot about this question because there's plenty of things. Like I have conversations with like fellow influencers or content creators a lot and like the most common problem I see that doesn't get taken care of. And it's like, I'd love to help as much as possible. I think this is a hard subject to solve, but it has to do with like mental health and stuff like that. When you're like a social media influencer, you essentially just put yourself out there for everyone to judge you. Everyone has to, you know, have a say about you or whatever. And it's like, it's just not enough people take care of themselves. Not enough people understand that like, you really have to keep your mental health in check. If you're gonna, you know, succeed on this platform and actually be happy when you do it. Uh, like it's something I've struggled with a lot throughout the years, and only this past year has I have I really been able to manage my own mental health and actually you know help myself and a lot of other people. So I feel like that's like the biggest thing I'd love to do something about somehow help people in that way. That is great, and I think that's really important because when people just in any area, be it YouTube, football, just any arena, really, they don't often look at the mental side. They often see, yeah. oh, he looks great. He must be doing yeah. Fun. But there's often like many things going on inside which people fail to understand. Exactly. Like that's the thing, right? You don't expect, I mean, it's, it's kind of an absurd thing to talk about it like this. But when, even when you get like obscurely, like for example, for me, a lot of my fans, like they love my content, right? And I'm really grateful for all their positive uh, feedback. But sometimes even getting 
too much positive feedback can almost uh, like inflate your ego a little bit. That's why you see so many people out there get so full of themselves and you have to protect yourself from that sometimes. So you, you know, you stay realistic, you stay healthy and you know, what's real, what's realistic essentially. Uh, and it took a long time for me to do that. I don't feel like I was ever egotistical, but it was just whenever I did well, right. I'd always be like, ah, you know, everything's going to be all right. It's going to be good. I'm, I'll just sit back and relax. And that's not really how you're supposed to do this, uh, do your work. So, um, yeah, there's so many different ways. Like it's different for everybody. That's why it's such a difficult subject. Like everyone has, you know, we're all different in here. Um, so managing like your own mental health is such a personal thing, but that's like, I, I love helping people and I'd love to, I don't know how I would do it, but just to spearhead some sort of way of like wave of change and help people find themselves would be the best. That sounds amazing. I think that's like one thing that we're seeing a lot of nowadays when yes. people might like get that one um, video that goes viral and they're like, then after a while of like building up their following and stuff, they think, Oh, I can do music. I can do this. I can do that. Yeah. It's about like saying like, this is what I started on. This is the reason why they follow me. And I should really stick to this on, and maybe even if I do want to change, it's about then like changing to it slowly, not just like a, Hey, there's this, this, this. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's like just doing, you know, your work correctly. I just mean like, uh, you got to make sure that like, despite what's happening, like I try to not put too much of myself out there, like my personal life. Like let's say today, I, I don't know. I ate spaghetti. Like I don't really go that deep into my stuff. I don't go into my relationship too much. Cause I feel like that stuff should remain private. So I can like, you need to have a private life. If you're going to be out on the internet, you need to have your own personal time where you can do the things you like, have the hobbies that you like still and still be a person. Right. That's, that's like the most important thing. So not just, you know, dedicate your entire life to the internet because that's just going to make you feel bad. And that's that's kind of what I've I've been going through, especially this past year. I've been uh, sort of reinventing myself, um, doing a lot of work to just improve myself and stuff like that. So that it's ab- helped me greatly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I totally agree with that. And I really urge that you listeners are taking notes on what Hubert has to share with us today. (laughs) Important information here. It can help a lot of people. (laughs) Yeah, I totally agree with that. Could you share with us like the so-called pivotal point along your journey and what did it teach you? Mm. So uh, it's hard to, it's hard to specify. I I, I can think of one that really did, um, I guess, keep me really pushing forward. Um, And this was, quite early. I think I'd uploaded two videos at this point when this has happened. So this is back in 2013. This is seven (laughs) years ago. Um, And I had, yeah, I'd uploaded two videos. And then suddenly, um, so this was back when I was like 16. I just like uh, taking a break off of school, right? I'd been off school for like two months. Um, And then one of my friends sent me this like a screenshot from this like private Facebook chat where like a bunch of my old classmates had made this um, chat where they'd made fun of my videos, right? They'd written a a crap ton of things about my videos. There was, I think they spent like two hours just chatting about me, right? At first I was, I was completely devastated. I was like, okay, I'm done. This is it. Like I'm giving up now. I don't want to take this bullying anymore because I'd been already, you know, bullied my entire life before that. Um, and I, it, to me, it just felt like it's enough. Now they found, found this, it's never going to end. Um, but then like after a while, right? Like, I'm really glad I have really supportive parents. Like you've spoken to my mom, you know how you know good she is at the stuff she does. Um, you know, I had a talk with them and I told them like, I don't want to do this anymore, blah, blah, blah. And then like, they, they, sh- they just told me that like, look how much time these people are spending just like talking about you, right? Like, yeah, they're making fun of me, but they spent like two hours just typing about me. Yeah. It was just me, it was me, 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 me. And it just made me feel like, oh, like, wow, they're just talking about me, you know? And they're spending so much time trying to make fun of me, trying to do all this stuff. And it just, I was like, I can't quit now, right? Like this is, it doesn't make sense. I have mm-hmm. to keep going now. I have to prove them wrong. Uh, and I have to keep keep moving. So it, it in the end, it actually became more of a motivation. Like, I, you know what? I'm not going to let this take me down and I'm just going to push through it. And that's when I really like, you know, really started moving and really started producing videos. Uh, it still took a long time before I really took off, but it was like a moment that made me go like, 
you know, screw these people, screw these haters or whatever. I'm just going to keep doing my own thing the way I want to do it. Mm, definitely. And I think that's really important how then you was able to use that as, to encourage you to then achieve more in your life. Yeah. Yeah. People like that will always try to push you down or whatever, even though like, I don't feel, I don't have any ill will towards these people today. Cause I understand we were all like 16, right? We we're all like really young. Yeah. Um, and I've even spoken to some of them and I know they regret it today. They're like, I wish I didn't do that. And you know, they apologize. So again, like absolutely no ill will towards them. I, I have a good relationship with some of them today, actually, which is really nice. And you know, I, I'm just, I'm happy that I was able to convert it into energy instead of like push forward. So mm, totally, yeah. in the end, it turned out good. Mm, yeah, def definitely. Definitely. I think that's like really like a, just an important story because then how it then teaches how then you was then able to change that adversity and all the hardship that you had to go through at such a young age and turn it into an empowerment to simply say like, Hey, this is, I'm going to use it as motivation for me to then mm. do even more and just get even better really. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. So in a way I'm, I'm happy it happened, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What would you like say that motivated you like during moments of crisis? So, Let's say that someone's having like a huge crisis. They they might be going through what you had to go through. What would you? What words of advice would you give to them? So to someone like going through the same thing that I am. Yeah. Mm, I mean, oh, so, so like something similar that happened to me at that point, right? Like where you want to give up or something, yeah. right? Uh, so yeah, I. I it, it's hard to hard to say because like I said before with the whole mental health thing, like every person is different. We all, we all have different problems and everyone struggles with different things, but like, uh, it's hard to say. I, I think, I think if you're being made fun of or bullied or, you know, you don't think you're good enough to keep going. Like I've struggled with all these thoughts. I, I, I always try to just encourage people to push through the pain. Um, like, uh, it's just it's just hard to say because I know some people really struggle with this but I, I think honestly just like trying to find whatever energy you have and just like push forward through 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 whatever it is you want to do and just try to get it done or whatever and just feel some sort of pleasure out of it like I don't th I don't think giving up is inherently wrong to be honest I don't think if something feels um like it's too much for you if you generally just don't enjoy something like I've had plenty of things in the past where like I've tried stuff in my personal life that just didn't work out i'm like you know what it just wasn't fun i think as long as you try something and as long as you do something um it's just never wrong like as long as you can find the motivation to like hey at least i tried it right so there's no regrets in the end i think that's what really matters um so i i think i don't know if that counts as advice i don't know if you'd say that that's good advice but like I, I, I just find there's so many different people out there. There's so many different um, issues. I want to, I want to help everyone, but I understand that I can't at the same time. Uh, no, I, I, to I totally agree with that. I think like what you're trying to say is just like, it's about, yeah, you can try something new and you can try a couple of times, but then if you then re come to a point where you realize that this isn't actually for me or. Yeah. Yeah. That, exactly. Perfect. So, so yeah, that's sort of what I mean where it's like, if if you get to a point where you don't enjoy it anymore, that's when you can give up. But it, whatever people say about you, and if you're being, like I said, made fun of or bullied, you know, you just keep pushing forward. Like that pain is gonna stop. You know that that it's temporary. You just push on. Mm, definitely, definitely, I totally agree. With that. That's an amazing, amazing answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, could you like share some advice for um people who are then they're lacking motivation during most of crisis such as now. Mm. So um, honestly, I'd say that right now, what helped me, especially uh, I had a really bad year last year where I didn't feel motivated. I was just, I felt like just, I wanted to lie in bed all day and just do nothing. Cause I, 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 I was struggling with a lot of things. I think the most important thing for me right now is actually exercise. This is something maybe, I don't know if you're expecting this sort of answer, but this is, my life right now. I love exercising and maybe you don't have to take it to a level where you do it all the time, but just having like a routine where you do, I, if you can go out jogging, if that's not possible right now, you know, do stuff at home. I found that exercises helped me so much with just like, it's like, 
it's like a form of meditation for me at this point. If I ever like just go to the gym and I'm just doing my thing, I can just sort of like zone out in my own head and it's the best thing ever. I love it so much and I cannot encourage it enough for, uh, for anyone. Something else I'd like, uh, love to recommend is just like uh, online therapy. If you have it you know, available, if it's accessible to you, um, I absolutely try that. If you feel like, you know, you struggle with, it can be anything. Like a lot of people have the assumptions that you need to be like really unwell to see a therapist. But um, personally, I've, I've started seeing a therapist and I'd say that my problems are not nearly as bad as they used to be. I feel much better mentally, but I'm still seeing a therapist now because it's like just the little things that can stress you out. It, it's so good to talk about it. It's so good to find someone that, you know, you can share these thoughts with and they'll give you good advice and help you set up like a routine, like a schedule or whatnot. Um, so those are like the two primary things that have helped me so much recently. And I, it's weird to say it like this, but even though this year has been really chaotic, I feel so much better this year than I did last year. And it's, it doesn't make any sense, but it's because of these things. It's because I've had um, help from a professional and exercise and just sort of a healthy li healthier lifestyle. Mm, definitely. And I totally agree with that because those two are really important. Because like, just like having that like morning routine, you might wake up, do a couple of push-ups or things like that. It then gives you something to look forward to and actually brightens the mood because then you feel like you've achieved something before you actually Yes, fight. exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's literally like growing your own garden, but it's like your body, right? Like yeah. you're literally managing it. It feels great. It's fantastic. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree. And I really do urge that you listeners do give it a try and just like see the benefits really. Absolutely. You can do so much at home with just your body weight. Like you said, just yeah. do a couple of push-ups, man. I started doing 10 push-ups a day. That was what I started when I was like, I think I was 15 or something. I started doing that. And from there, you know, it escalated. And now I, you know, I've come, come a long way, I'd say. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, Hubert, if you had a megaphone and you was then able to say one thing to the world, I would have a lasting influence. What would it be and why? Okay, so this question I gave a lot of thought, right? At first, I was going to say uh, something along the lines of like mental health awareness or whatever. Uh, I actually went and asked a friend specifically because I was like, I really, I really want to find something that like, you know, what, what would give a long lasting impact? And he, he sat and thought for a while. And he, he told me, and I wrote this down. He said, don't be depressed though have an espresso and that, I don't know why that was so good. I just, I loved it so much. So if I had a megaphone right now, I tell people don't be depresso, have an espresso. That's <laughs> love it, love it. Definitely. <laughs> um, I'd, fra yeah. I'd frame it on my wall here if I could right now. Uh, that's great words of advice. Definitely. Um, if like, what are the, top three lessons that you have learned along your journey and how did after those like lessons have passed how did they then influence the way you look at life okay so um a lot of these i it's weird because a lot of these lessons only really came to me like last year because like i said uh, i don't know how um how deeply like how much you've looked at like my video specifically but i haven't actually uploaded now for over a year yeah um, like properly so this is because um, I had a lot of videos go really, really viral last year. And then um, it sort of hit me that like, I hadn't really, I had so many underlying already like, like stress related issues and things like that, that was, that were already bothering me. And they just like multiplied tenfold when, um, when all this stuff started happening, I started feeling so much pressure. Uh, so I sort of took a year off just to, cause I needed to reinvent myself. And I feel like at, through this last year, I've learned so much. And I feel like uh, the three things that I've actually written down here are um, some of the things that I've just learned during this last year. And I feel like this has been the most significant period of my life, actually. So um, the first thing I'd say is that I don't need to prove anything to anyone to reach my goal. I did mention before that like one of the pivotal moments in my career or whatever uh, was when these people uh, you know, picked on me and I felt like I wanted to prove them wrong. Uh, and that's why I kept going, which initially is good. But in the end, I've come to the conclusion that it doesn't matter what anyone says. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks or what they expect of me. I don't need to prove anything to these people to do what I want to do. Like I do it for myself. This came to me like as I was doing, you know, gym stuff and training and stuff like that. Cause I felt like 
I'm not training or doing anything for anyone. Like this is something I do just because it makes me feel good. And that's how I feel about my work. Now. Like, that's why I want to do it because it makes me feel good. It's something I enjoy. So that's like the first thing I'd say. Uh, and the second thing is that I personally need a routine and a healthy lifestyle to achieve my goals and just find a general sort of happiness. Um, I, you know, I try to wake up at a decent time in the morning. It is difficult. I struggle with it a lot. Okay. Yeah. Anyone who says they wake up at 6 a.m. every day, they're lying. No, it doesn't happen. Okay. Um, I try to, you know, stay consistent with my sleep, make sure I get enough sleep, uh, have some sort of routine where I know I'm going to wake up in the morning. And then during the evening, I got, you know, free time. I can play video games. I can spend time with family, friends or whatever. Um, so having that, you know, knowing that I have that and keeping that up has re been really helpful for me. And then the final one is taking care of my mental health which is part of the second one, I guess, uh, is critical, critical to find happiness, making sure that, you know, um, if you feel stressed, if you feel like you're not good enough or you don't value yourself enough, you know, that's, it's never true. Like your brain is an enemy sometimes, like it can play so many tricks on you, try to make you feel bad or whatever, but I don't know. I feel anyone can uh, benefit from uh, therapy and, you know, any sort of, uh, mental health help, I guess, if that makes sense. I really feel like so many, so much, so many people out there would really benefit from a therapist or something, or just talking to anyone, to be honest. Like if you ever feel sad or stressed or whatever, just talking to a friend really, really helps. Uh, and I think, think that just having a, some sort of support group or if you feel bad, if you feel down, you open up to them helps so much. Cause I know that was like when I had my, um, like my crash or whatever last year when I really had to just stop talking to friends, talking to family, talking to then now a therapist has just improved my life so much. So those were like the three things that are my general tips or my lessons that I've learned throughout the journey. That is actually so true because like uh, you touched on like several key points there, but the one that I'd like to focus on was how you spoke about like mental awareness and things like that. Because when people often hear about it, they think, oh, I haven't been diagnosed with anything, so I don't have to worry about it. But yes. if you, like, we all, um, those of you who don't know, there's a quote which says, prevention is better, is better than cure. So it's about then having those things in place, so regardless of whether it's bad, good, but it's just having them in place so that you never have to get to that stage. Exactly, exactly. And that was the thing for me. I didn't take care of myself properly you know, when I was doing my stuff before, I was very, um, you know, all over the place. I didn't really have a schedule or any sort of sense of stability in my life. Um, and now that I feel like I do, I feel like I can handle these. Like, for example, if I had a bad day a year ago, it would be a bad day. And that was it. Like, I felt like it was just, I couldn't do anything about it. The bad day just took control over me. But the more I learned to take care of myself and control myself and control my thoughts, I felt like I could take a bad day and turn it into an okay day. And that, that difference to me was so substantial because it meant that like my feelings didn't control me. I controlled my feelings. And through just, you know, like I said, talking with people, expressing yourself, finding, um, you know, something where you can push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, that's like the key. And that really helps you take control of the things that feel so impossible sometimes. Like, I'd, I'd be terrified of just, you know, going outside at some point because I was like, oh God, like what if these people see me and they see me that I haven't uploaded in a year and what if they'll judge me? And today I'm like, that's stupid. Like who cares, right? Um, just, you know, take care of yourself. It's, 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 it, it sounds so easy. It is hard, but it's so worth it. Mm, definitely. And I really did like what you said there about like scheduling and things like that. Because then as a result of scheduling, it not only brightens up the mood of your day, but then it also pushes you to work harder throughout your days because you know that I have to get this done today. So then it makes every day more productive. Yes, and exactly. And the thing is, you can actually, like, for example, some days when I was at my, like, working the most, I could work for, like, 10 hours a day, right? But if it, now, today, if I work even just half that time, I can get more done specifically because I've, like, planned it and I know that I'm going to do this now. And then later... 
I'll have all the free time I want, right? So you get more, like you, you have more effective work time as well. And then you'll just do more anyway in a shorter period of time, which just makes it better because you've got more free time now. So, you know, it all feeds into itself and you'll just live a better life essentially. Definitely. I totally agree with that. Um, if you had to be like another person for one day, who would it be Ooh. and why? Oh, this one is so difficult. I, I, have, I have no idea. I mean, I guess that's a technically a good thing if I like being myself to a certain degree, but uh, I, would it have to be a person or could it be? Because I'd love to like try to be a dog for a day or something because they look so happy. I'd love to just try yeah. to be a dog or something. But uh, if, it, if it had to be a specific person, Maybe like Morgan Freeman. I'd love that voice for like a day. Yeah. He, he, like just being like God, I'd love that. It'd be amazing. So <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it's a person, let's say Morgan Freeman, if I can go beyond that, I'd love to be a dog for a day. That'd be great. Oh, those are two very great, great answers. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> uh, is there like anything you've done in the past and now – looking back on it you may have wished that you've done it differently or maybe even sooner what did it mm. teach you so um i think like the primary thing for me so, so i've like you know you might have caught the glimpse that i've struggled with like discipline issues a little bit making sure i do things on time making sure i you know stay consistent with things so i guess if i had to like talk to my younger self and like i, I don't know we, or if i could do things differently i wish maybe i worked a bit more on my discipline i mean at the same time like i look at myself and i'm happy i did the things that i did because i i feel like um i grew a lot emotionally as a kid and i had a lot of time you know my parents were really supportive of me and stuff and i felt like i, I i've i've grown in other ways that i guess a lot of other people haven't but i i've still always just lacked that discipline bit a little bit so if i had to go back and change something i guess i wish i could have been a little bit more disciplined so i wouldn't have to struggle as much with like you know keeping everything on track in my uh adult life i guess um i, th I think that's like the only thing really i don't really regret much in my life to be honest when i look back at things so that's pretty much the only thing i'd say oh that's absolutely amazing i think that's really important to then look back on things and actually not regret anything because when you actually look back on life all things that have happened have happened for a reason to then bring you to the place where you are currently. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's just that, like, I know a lot of people that look back into their past and they, you know, look at themselves like, oh, God, how could I have been such an idiot and done the thing? And it's like, yeah, I've done a lot of things like that. I was, I was probably, I was a real, like, nerd when I was a kid. But the thing is, like, that's okay. Like, I, I again, I used to be really bullied and stuff, but I don't look at myself like I was an idiot. I look at myself like I was just being myself, right? And yeah. the people that picked on me, uh, we're obviously in the wrong, but they probably struggled with something. They probably had other, like everyone in, you know, I, no one in my school really enjoyed school. So, you know, we were, we were all kind of having a bad time and some people just chose to express themselves differently. Mm -hmm. And I try not to look back and blame anyone because I feel like that's not productive. It's not like no one gains anything from that. I look at myself and I'm like, I was this way when I was a kid. I'd much more rather look at me and be like, you know what? I had fun during some times and I was just who I am. I'm happy with where I am today. And like you said, everything that happened then led me to this point and you know, that's where I am and I got to make the best of it. Definitely. I totally agree with that. What advice would you then give to your younger self? I'd say that numbers and money do not dictate my worth. That it's, I, uh, you are who you are because of what, how you act and, you know, what you have in here, not anything, any physical yeah. manifestation or whatever. Mm, yeah. That's, that's what I tell myself. So I 100% agree with that because then, like, people often value themselves, like, how much do I have here? Uh, how many cars do I have? But it's not about that because then it's like giving someone a present, but then on the inside it's empty. It's not going to be of much use to someone. So if you, you might have all these amazing things on the outside, but if you don't do the internal work, then it's not really worth it. Exactly, exactly. And I know a lot of my like, fellow YouTubers, content creators or whatever struggle with this where you know, they'll tie their self-worth to 
uh, their analytics, like their, yeah. their literal numbers on their page. So, you know, one day it's going up and they're like, yeah, dude, this is great. And then the next day it's like this and they'll, you know, go into a deep depression. Uh, and that's kind of where I was when I was like 16. And I, even just like growing up, I always had this image of success is having a lot of money and, you know, having the big numbers. And that's just not true. Like maybe, you know, success, like monetary success is that, you know, having a lot of money, but you'll never find happiness. You'll never find content. You'll never feel like you have worth unless you take care of yourself. And yeah, yeah. Mm. I think that's the primary thing that I tell totally. myself. Totally. Yeah, definitely. It's about them being content with yourself. Cause then as a result of them simply like owning who you are, yeah. then you're then able to attract the things that you then desire as well. Exactly. Exactly. Could you then like share some advice with those who, let's say someone's like started up a brand new YouTube channel and they're struggling to come up with like content ideas or maybe even they're just struggling to get like a bigger audience? Mm. I mean, on YouTube specifically, it's very, I'd say like, I mean, this goes for a lot of things in life, to be honest, but it's really a game of patience to an extent. I think that like, um, the people that I've seen succeed like around me are the people that have stayed and actually kept going throughout all the years, right? Like it took me around like six years to really get going and actually like land in the spotlight and get like, I started like a trend essentially. Uh, it took me a long time, but it's because I just kept going, kept trying new things. And I think, um, a lot of people think that they can't come up with ideas because they're not creative enough. And that's not true. I believe that every single person out there has the capacity to be really creative. Honestly, making jokes and being creative is like a thing you learn after a while. Like if you just try whatever comes to mind and you're not scared that like, Oh my God, this is going to be so bad. You try that. You keep trying those things. Eventually you'll just start coming up with new ideas, better ideas, and then you'll just keep pushing. And then eventually once you've learned all this stuff, you might just, you know, catch a glimpse of that spotlight. And like it happened with me, you will just be shot out there. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, I actually made it. Um, so I think even though like, and the thing, the best part about YouTube is that you don't need to be in the spotlight to be successful, right? You can still, you know, make a, an income uh, that you can live off of, even though like with just a smaller audience, right? You, so you don't need to be this huge artist or whatever to get, get anywhere or whatever. Um, so that, that's like, I just, just keep going, keep being persistent, keep trying new things and don't be afraid that like someone's going to leave a bad comment. Right? Yeah. Like I used to, when I was at my starting point where I had like, let's say a hundred subscribers, I remember if someone unsubscribed from me during a day, I would, I would be like, Oh God, why did they do that? I wish they could tell me why they did that. And it's like, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Just keep pushing. Right, those little numbers don't matter. As long as you're having fun, as long as you feel like this is something you want to do, like just keep going. Totally, totally. It's about then following your passion and following like what you enjoy because then people will then sense that and then they'd like to just follow the journey, really. Yeah, exactly. If you if you can find a style, like the more you explore and the more you experiment, the more personal and uh, like the, the more the more the content will um, reflect you. Right. And you, it'll be more original. Right. And that's eventually you'll just find a style that really works for you. And that's when you'll start sticking out and people will notice you. Definitely. And lastly, could you then share with the listeners where they can find you if they'd like to find out about any upcoming things you may have? I mean, I'm on YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash G I'm on Twitter as, a lot as well right now. So I'm, I'm like, I'm still sort of in this process of reinventing myself or whatever working on myself so i'm gonna be coming back to youtube if any of my fellow listeners are here as well um i'm, I'm coming back i'm working you know on stuff if you want to find me right now i'm on twitter at mr g have that's where you can follow me whenever i post stuff on youtube it's going to be on there as well so that's my primary source of content at the moment <laughs> that is great. Thank you so much for sharing. And you guys heard it here. So feel free to go and follow um, Huber, also known as Jihab on Twitter and YouTube when he's back. And I'd like to thank you for coming on the Influencer Show today. Thank you. It was very fun. Very good questions. Very deep thought, you know, thought provoking. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'd like to thank you listeners for tuning in. And as always, if you guys missed anything, feel free to rewind it so you guys did not miss any of the golden nuggets that Hubert uh, gave us today. 
And also, if you guys like to have the chance to be featured on the Influencer Show, feel free to email the email that's going to be popped up on screen. And I hope you guys have a great day. That's it from me. Bye.